Ah, it's still spinning. Yes! Yes! Hello, everyone. We've been having technical difficulties trying to get this to broadcast, but now uh, we're here. So, uh, sorry we're five minutes late. All right, um, today we are talking about cosmic encounters. <laughs> here we go again. Yay! Uh, yay! Uh, this is Sonia, and I'm here with Robert and Tony. Uh, I don't think anything broadcasted, but a question I started with was, um, what was everyone's first impression when you first played the game back a long time ago when we all first played Cosmic Encounter? So, uh, I guess Tony yeah. can go ahead and continue with if yeah. you remember. <laughs> okay, well, I'll, I'll try my best. Um, I guess it seemed, um, it seems like there was a, a lot of, um, just interact interaction in the game. Um, you really just uh, um, <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> so is it, it seemed like every single turn was um, an opportunity for something to happen, like um, pretty major. I guess the the first few turns not so much, but, but the game like after the first two turns um, really picks up, and then just everybody has to sort of. Um, interact with each other to, to keep somebody from winning, you know? Um, mm -hmm. And I thought it was just, I, I like that uh, that much interaction where you just, um, even though it's not your turn, like everybody else's turn, you're still participating in some point. So that was my first impression, I think. <laughs> hmm. um, can you, can you guys hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, okay. It, it did something clever. I was typing, and it said it turned my mic off because yeah. I was typing. So That's I was like, yeah, feature, I think. cool, and now it's back on. <laughs> I'm sorry, go ahead, Sonia. You were going to say something. Okay. Um, gosh. Um, I actually, when I first played it, I didn't like it. I, <laughs> I, I was really frustrated by it because, I don't know, like it was the first time I played a game where... Um, you like pit yourself against everybody, but in a way that's kind of really like backstabby, and um, I don't know, like I wasn't sure at first, and things got got heated, and people would get upset at the beginning when you know you weren't really sure what you were doing, and, and you had all this stuff with the aliens, that all these things that you had to learn about the, the, the character you were playing, and, and it just, it just I don't know. At first I didn't like it. Um, but then when I got used to it, uh, I did enjoy it. I, I enjoyed, you know, kind of like conquering and, and um, you know, fight, fighting against each other. And, and I really like the different diversity and the aliens and all their abilities and everything. Um, but my first impression actually when I first played it, I wasn't sure if I wanted to play it again. But I gave it a second chance and I liked it better after that. So I will say that was my first impression. But now I like it a lot. Because it has a lot of replayability and that's what I really like about it. I agree. I actually have a, a similar kind of first impressions. Um, I I had always heard a lot about the game, um, mostly just that it was supposed to be a really good game and that uh, a lot of people recommended it, a lot of people hailed it as one of the best board games ever made, you know, a lot of really positive things. Um, and the first time I played it, I did not see much of any of that. And, and it was really baffling because I was just thinking, you know, how, how can so many people say this is such a, you know, amazing high quality game and yet it just, it didn't seem to show that. But um, the first time I played it afterwards, I felt like there must have been something I was missing or there was something there. And I, I kind of felt like there was something there. I just had to kind of figure that out. And uh, after playing it a few times, um, I actually discovered, you know, exactly why a lot of people say it's such a great game. And a lot of it had to do with the fact that it took me a little while to get past all the, um, just the learning curve. 
You know, it's a very, very technical game, and uh, you know, you can get kind of bogged down by you know all the phases and knowing when to play something and if something's better to play at a certain time. You know, making allies, the social aspect, all that. But once you kind of get that figured out, and most of the people I play games with now know how to play to a certain degree. Uh, now it's it's a, a you know very very different experience than the first time. Mm -hmm. I think every experience too when you play it, depending on the aliens that you get, can be good or bad. Sometimes like you'll have it where there's two aliens that you know when you pit them against each other, they like cancel each other out, mm -hmm. and that's not always that fun, and it can get confusing. And sometimes I don't like those games as much as I like the games where it feels like there's more of a balance between the aliens, that they kind of have very different abilities, so there's no, like, extreme conflict of, of between, like, a character that not necessarily has a similar ability, but has an ability that kind of, like, cancels out the other one and just kind of takes away, it kind of takes away that experience a little bit. Um, and, and I've heard but, that argument or I personally haven't played as an alien that was canceled out by another yet. I've, I've played in games where that scenario has existed. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm sure I'd have a different uh, opinion if I had actually experienced it firsthand. Yeah, but, I didn't actually experience it first. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, no, that's okay. I, but my, my whole point is that um, I don't mind the fact that some aliens cancel each other out. Because mm. typically... Uh, or I should say, generally, it's um, you know, it's only when they're fighting each other. The rest of the time, their abilities are 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 pretty much functional. Um, and to me, that that can kind of while it's not as interesting as having two active abilities during combat, having two abilities to cancel each other out is rare enough that it's just another possible scenario in you know while playing the game. Uh, yeah. But I'm sure I'd have a different opinion if I was actually playing. Right. Yeah, I um, don't think I had that experience either. Um, but I, I've been in games where it's been played, and I think if I had been in their shoes, I would have probably been a little frustrated. Yeah, for sure. Um, I was just wondering, um, when you guys first played, I don't know if you both played at the same time, um, but how many people were playing? Do you remember? I think like four, maybe. Yeah, maybe four or five. It was a yeah. small group. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's still pretty big. I was just yeah. wondering because I feel like the game might not be as interesting when you have less people. Mm -hmm. I'm not yeah. Sure, I I think I've I've not played very many three-player games. Mm -hmm. um, that was certainly not as interesting as like the eight-player games. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, which is actually one of the things I, I love about this game is the fact that it a lot of games, the more people you add, the more the, the longer it takes, the more complicated it gets, and sometimes it's almost not worth it. You know, a lot of games you'll hear have like a sweet spot. You know, mm -hmm. if a game can have ten people playing, the sweet spot's like maybe five or six. But with this, um, I legitimately feel like the game gets better the more people that you have. Um, yeah. and, a, and a lot of that is due to the fact that the game is built in such a way that really everyone has an opportunity to be doing something on anybody's turn. So they're not the they're not the they're not sitting and waiting for their turn to happen. Um, so that's a that's a huge benefit. And uh, it doesn't necessarily extend the duration of the game because um, victory, because everyone can kind of play on everyone's turn, it means that everyone is ultimately working towards victory even when it's not their turn. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's what I love about this game too is that it's like, like you were saying, if it's not your turn, you still get to play. And there are some games mm -hmm. where you'll have like eight, people and they don't have that mechanic so you're just waiting and you're waiting and you're waiting for your turn and I and I can't stand that I get bored and I get antsy and I'm just like oh I want to play so badly I feel like I'm just watching other people play and yeah in this it's like there's a chance they could attack you there's a ch you know there's a chance that you could you know ally with a person you know and that's that's more exciting 
yeah. I think, um, when you're able to do that. I don't know. If, oh, I, were, you gonna, were you going to the bathroom? No, I was closing the door. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, any, all, every time I leave the door open, dogs end up barking or some kind of crazy yeah. noise happens. So I was just preempting that. Okay. Um, so I guess to elaborate on the gameplay and everything, what, it, what do you think about the mechanics of the game and how it's played? And um, before the... Without the expansions and with the expansions, or or you could just say with the, whatever you want to talk about, I guess. Oh man! Think of it. Well, I know that um, I played the game. I think I I played the game without the expansions, and then I think I ended up playing it with all the expansions. I think I got I think I got them all at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, so it wasn't, I couldn't really say how they were individually. Well, that's not entirely true. I, I do have some opinions about them individually. Um, but uh, I think, for the most part, um, the mechanics for the game uh, are, are great for, for what they need to do. Um, part of me wants to believe that it could be simplified a little bit, or at least clarified, so that um, there would be less um, technicality, a lot less, you know, uh, procedure to worry about, or at least make that clearer. I actually, I mean, on the back of the the manual, I think I have it. or the yeah, the rule book on the, on the back of the rule book, it has like all all the phases and stuff on it, mm -hmm. which. Um, is helpful. Uh, it might be more, even more helpful if everyone had this available to them, and if there were more details in there. Like, for example, with the expansions, um, with one of the expansions, it includes um, technology, which mm -hmm. you're allowed to basically research a technology um, before um, or at the beginning of your turn, right? Um, but it's before the regroup phase, I believe, which is like, I don't know if you can see it, but the first phase is the regroup phase. So a lot of people forget to do technology. And I almost feel like if everyone had that in front of them and it had a full uh, reference sheet with all of the um, expansions included, um, that might help a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, for the most part, it works out really well. Um, and, uh, I mean, there's a lot of mechanics. I could, I could go into a lot of them, but for the most part, I think, uh, you know, part of the reason the game is successful is it's very structured, and so then it comes down to just the social aspect. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I do like the mechanics um, for the most part, and I think they're well done. Um, okay. Uh, I guess I'll, I'll talk. Um, <laughs> I, I think... Um, I really like the mechanics of being able to ally with each other and, um, well, I guess, like I said before, like interact with each other because it just really makes it a uh, um, big part of the game where you can, you know, play while it's somebody else's turn and um, it just makes it so, it, like, one of the things that the game can be sort of scary when you have like a ton of people with is that you think oh I'm never gonna get a turn like you know the person that goes first is you know to your um, to your right and then so you, it goes around the table before you ever get a turn but the thing is is that not only does is everybody able to interact um, but um, basically because there's so many people uh, Robert your screen just went to your picture. No? You can't can see, see him? Well, for me, anyways. Sorry. Oh. Anyways. Um, okay. So, um, it also makes it so the game kind of slows down a little bit near the end, you know, when everybody's getting to the four victory points, you know, near the five, then people are trying to slow each other down, you know, so somebody doesn't win. So, yeah. you usually get one or two turns, and it just allows everybody to play the game all the time, you know. Um, so... <laughs> Robert, sorry. So that's... I, I think that's the, the 
best mechanic for for the game. I, I also like the um, the huge amount of alien races in the game. It just mm-hmm. allows you to to play it, you know, especially with the expansions. I mean, right, it's yeah. like ridiculous. I've only played maybe twenty of them, or I mean, not myself, but in games I've played. And because we have so many expansions, I don't think I'll ever see them all. Right, and I, yeah. I mean, I almost feel like I wish. I guess you could do this, but to take out the ones <laughs> you've played and just yeah, that's insane. <laughs> to yeah. just take out the ones well, you've played I and just... like you know cycle through it, so you get to experience all of them. Even I, if you're just, not yeah. doing I just made the house rule that like if you because at the beginning of the game you're dealt out basically two uh, alien aliens to choose from. Um, uh, and uh, I've basically made the house rule that if you get if either of the aliens is an alien you've played as before, you can ask for it to be swapped out. Um, and I think of all the ga- games I've played, I've only had someone ask once to mm-hmm. do that. I think it was probably um, me. Because <laughs> I was like, no, I don't want to play this one again. But, but granted, yeah. granted the... Um, uh, I, ha- I do still see the same aliens pop up, but yeah. it's other people playing them, and they haven't played them before. Mm-hmm. And it's neat to see what other people do with those aliens, you know? Right. If they use their powers more aggressively or even cooperatively. And I'm still encountering aliens that just kind of blow my mind. I mean, I think when I got the game and each of the expansions, I read through all the aliens, but because there's so many, I kind of just glossed over them. But there was there's some that I've encountered that just are absolutely crazy. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, the butler was probably one of the most bizarre experiences I had ever played at that game. Mm-hmm. I don't know if either of you guys played the game with the butler. I don't think I played no, it with the butler. I don't oh, think I'm this. What what happened with the butler? So the butler the butler totally changes the way the, the game's played kind of. Mm-hmm. Basically, the person who is playing as the butler has to serve the player whose turn it is, basically. So if it's my turn and uh, or if it's Sonya's turn and I'm the butler, um, during the regroup phase, she has the option to retrieve a ship from the warp. That's what everyone gets to do on at the beginning of their turns, is retrieve a ship from the warp, the, the regroup phase. But the butler is um, uh, required during that phase, in every phase, to basically, uh, or during the regroup phase, the butler has to go, would, would you like me to retrieve your ship for you? And actually, they actually request that. And oh, the, so it's like it's like almost like a servant kind of. Yeah, a, it's like a servant. Yeah. And so there's 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 things that happen if the butler doesn't ask and like do their job. So for example, if the uh, I, I'd have to find it to know for sure, but it's like if if the butler doesn't ask um, the person if they can help them with something, the person can call them on it. And if they do, it's like they have to pay some kind of compensation. However, if the butler offers to help the person and they deny the help, then then the butler gets compensation from them. Well, that's cool. So then they always, pretty much always, have to do something. Yeah, the butler. So they don't lose something, but if somebody says no, then they get something. But the but the other benefit is is as long as the butler is helping somebody. They, the butler continues to get benefits, um, and so yeah. it's this real kind of symbiotic, bizarre kind of support role thing, and I think it even applies for when the player who who the, the butler is assisting is even his enemy. He mm-hmm. still has to be his butler. You know, it's like that's like, weird. You know, it's like he flips over his card and he's attacking him, and the butler's like, "Would you like me to assign ships for you to attack my planets?" Or I don't know. It's just it's very bizarre. And what what made it even more wild was the fact that our friend Blake was the one who got that card, and he's he's very loud and energetic, and he was all over that role. He had so much fun with that role, and I think we all enjoyed it as well because he was playing it. So that was that was a good one. Um, there is um, 
I thought there, I know there's probably more, but there is another alien that kind of has like a symbiosis aspect to it. I can't think of what it was, and I might have played it. Uh, the plant? Maybe. I don't think I, I played the plant, but that's a, I guess that's another one. Yeah, um, there's the healer, I think, where you can, like, um, prevent people's ships from getting destroyed, but you get, like, you get cards for each time you do it. Yeah, I so, think like, I, I played that character. Are, okay. Yeah, yeah, the healer. But then there was one here. that, I think it was, like, the fungus or something. Yeah. Oh, uh, that one's where me. You, I don't, I think it's a bad one, though, but no, yeah. that's not symbi symbiotic it's, then. That's well, it's parasitic. every time, the fungus is every time... Uh, ships are destroyed uh, in combat that the fungus is present in or something like that, mm -hmm. those ships are gained, like, by the fungus. Yes. Yeah. Some, like, fungus ships. And that's a really nasty one. Someone played that. I wasn't playing it, but I knew someone did, and, and yeah. yeah. That was like, oh, God. And then <laughs> yeah, you don't want them to ever win, because if they do, they eat, like, ten ships, and you're like, <laughs> oh, what do we do now? And, and that actually brings up an inter interesting... Um, uh, point. What uh, the other thing? When I first started playing the game, after the first couple games, I was so frustrated by the idea that there were so many just seemingly broken alien abilities. Just, just they were so powerful, you know, to the point where you just you didn't understand how is that even fair? Mm -hmm. um, you know, like the fungus. You know, the way yeah. the fungus works, it's so vicious. And there's another one, I think, called The Virus, which has um, just other horrible, horrible uh, side effects to it. And then some that... Oh, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. Go ahead. That. And then there's some that, that they're not, like... They, they're not, like, violent or anything or parasitic or whatever, but, like, characters like The Loser or The Pacifist. Yeah. You know, if they do badly or poorly, then they're... They are either winning. Well, a pacifist, if they totally die, everything gets destroyed, then they win. So it's kind of like it can go that way too. Yeah, but 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 like the first time, the first couple times I played and I saw all these characters, I I also thought like, how could this possibly be one of the best games ever made mm -hmm. if it's so unbalanced? Mm -hmm. So I actually did some research into that. Um, I was just curious, you know. At this was a this was a point in time when I was just trying so hard to understand why this game was so popular, um, and of course before I understood. But when I looked it up, I actually found um, an article or something about um, how the the designer of the game, the original designer of the game, um, admits openly that he intentionally. Um, created uh, alien race abilities that were more powerful than others. Uh, they're intentionally unbalanced. And when I first read it, I was like, that, that doesn't make any sense at all. You know, that goes against everything, you know, as a designer that you're supposed to do. However, his logic behind it was the fact that because the game's so cooperative and there's a lot of choice made in the game regarding, like, who you ally with, um, what it creates is this interesting dynamic where when someone gets an alien race card that's more powerful or seems more dangerous than another one, people will just naturally team up on that person. Or they will um, hesitate to ally with them because they don't, want, um, they don't want them to win. They don't want them to get that advantage. And so it actually... Um, creates an asymmetrical experience instead of a very symmetrical one, but one that, that really kind of balances mm -hmm. itself out. Um, the, only, the only danger with that is the fact that when you first start playing, like myself, and you don't understand that, you, you can actually be overwhelmed by it because everyone's kind of playing on the same level. That's true. I think your audio and your video is kind of like not syncing right. Mine? Robert. But my audio yeah. video. Let me reset. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I didn't mean to like interrupt that. I just it was kind of yeah. like yeah, I, <laughs> I don't know, like how about now? Uh same some more? 
Is this better than it was yeah. before? Yes. Okay. I, it's matching now. Okay. Huzzah. Um, yay. Um, we're still on gameplay. We can't. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. It's just so. gonna... There's a lot of them. <laughs> it's yeah, a conversation, you know. Oh, um, yeah. one of my favorite aspects of the game is that multiple people can win together. And hmm. that can be fun, and then sometimes... Okay. Sorry. <laughs> um, that can be fun, and sometimes it can suck for, like, the one person that doesn't win. <laughs> but, nice water. but I really like, like when people win together. Um, and, hmm. you know, you can get your allies to win together. Like, if you ally with me, you'll win together. It's kind of fun. Right. And I really like that aspect of it. It's not, like, just one one person, or everybody fails, or, you know, it's, there's so many um, opportunities to succeed or to fail, and I like that. And then, you know, going back to the whole, you know, the aliens not being completely balanced, um, that leaves a lot of room for different experiences, and, you know, the opportunity to have an alien that might be kind of hard to play because it's not really very good compared to other ones, but then it kind of forces you maybe to be a little more clever in who you're, who you're um, going to be allying with. I mean, it might make it, it might even make the game to where, you know, you might just have to ally with somebody and have to win together. You're not going to win alone because you have such an overpowered character that you, you know, can't really defeat unless you team up with somebody and I like that because it it every game is different every strategy is different depending on what you're getting and I really like that aspect of it yeah um, I just want to say Sonia I think that um, you, your mouth wasn't syncing up either it seems oh, really? like somebody's talking for a while it starts slowing down I don't know why um, oh, you know, I don't it know might if be... you notice it, Robert. Now I kind of notice it when I look at mine. It's really slow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, no. I, I don't know. It might just be Google Hangout. I'm not sure how. How do I reset it? Do I just turn it off and put it back on? My own camera? Mm. Or will that mess up the whole broadcast? Um, I, just, oh. um, I just muted myself and muted my camera and then reversed that. How about now? How's that? Looks I think fine it's better. Now. Okay. Yeah. And it's still broadcasting. Yeah. Okay, cool. It is still awesome. Normal. Yay. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Um. Ooh, okay. you're adding Google effects. Maybe you you can tell Sorry. I'm adding Google effects. It it said it. It said you it added Google effects. <laughs> you can't do it secretively. So. I was trying to sneak yeah. it in. But You're trying to sneak in a mustache, weren't you? <laughs> no. I just, I just wanted to make some sound effects. Oh, I'm sorry. I ruined it. Oh, Anyways. Robert. Proceed. Oh, wait. Hold on. <laughs> no. Sorry. Oh, boy. No, you don't? Yes. There goes the rest no, of the yeah. broadcast. No, it's all going to be Google. Yeah, I know. It's just going to be sound effects. Because I am so on. fantastic. <laughs> what do you think out there? <laughs> so oh, okay. Anyway. Anyways, I guess back to back to the conversation at hand. I suppose um, of the aliens that you've played, which one, if you remember, um, was your favorite, and for what reason? Hmm. I think for me, um, I think I played the mirror. Alien is that the one that um, you, you switch the numbers around? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one's I like a tough that one. because yeah, it it gives you a lot of mind games with the person. You know, it's like if the person because you get to choose whether you want to do it or not. So um, you know, if the person assumes that you're going to do it, they might put like a like a zero nine number, and then you can just put like a number twenty and say nope, I'm not going to do it, and you just kill them. Yeah. Um, I fall for that one every single powerful. time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just fail every time. I, 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 I'll go, oh, God, not the mirror again. Uh, I'm so going to fail. 
<laughs> it's just so <laughs> dumb. I mean, yeah. I don't know. It's just, I know what's going on, but then I forget. And then yeah. I, I forget when, I, when I'm like, yeah, I got like a 480. I'm going to win. And it's like, no, it's a four. I'm like, oh, God. I oh, forgot. when you're like fight facing the mirror person? Yeah, because I've yeah. never been in the mirror myself. I've only ever faced the mirror. So. Uh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, that was fun for me. I <laughs> um, I gosh, what who did I like? Um, I'm trying to remember. Yeah, there's so many. Mm. Um, I, I played know. the general one time. I can't remember. But I did play the loser, and I think the the loser was, gosh, um, where, oh, if you lose, you automatically win. Isn't that the the loser? Uh, oh, I just passed it. Let me see. It's the cute little kitty looking thing. <laughs> which which is part of why I like it too. Yeah, here we go. It's cute. <laughs> You have the power to upset. As a main player, before encounter cards are selected, you may use this power to declare the upset, or an upset. Mm -hmm. Once an upset has been declared, both main players may play attack cards, if possible. Then after cards are revealed, the winning side loses, and the losing sides win. So it basically switches. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I kind of like the loser in that, that, as that aspect of it, because it's kind of... It's sort of like the mirror... With the you're switching it, but it's more like you're switching lo winning and losing. So yeah, that's true. It's I know it's kind of cheap. It's kind of like instant win, but <laughs> really, it can I be mean, fun. No. Not necessarily. I mean, yeah, if it, they negotiate, it makes like the then. lower cards worth. You know, the lower cards win in the winter, the higher cards lose. So yeah, if somebody has a bunch of ones and they face the loser, then they're probably going to win against them. Did you were you able to choose? A, with the loser, or does it just happen automatically? I think you have to. It's. I think it's optional if you want it to happen. Oh, okay. I don't yeah. think it's mandatory. Yeah, and that's yeah, I like how some of the things are mandatory and optional on the cards. Like yeah. sometimes you're forced to do your power, which you don't necessarily always want to do, but you know that's just the game. And then right. sometimes it's optional where it's like, well, maybe I really don't want to do that right now because I feel like, like the mirror, you might have a really high card and, and decide, well, you know, it's very unlikely they're going to, like, if you have a 40, that they're going to have, you know, something yeah. right. they bigger that. than that. So yeah. you might not even bother with the whole switching around thing. So yeah. I like yeah, that too. That um, yeah. I'm I'm looking through. I'm trying to find ones that, I mean, there's fun. There one there's ones that are just kind of funny, but I can't think of one that I played as, that really, like, really liked it. Really, really liked. Now there are there are definitely ones out there that came in the expansions that I really want to play and I haven't gotten to play yet and I actually have them next to me <laughs> so mm -hmm. I'm going to share okay. that I really want to play the horde because they look like peeps, the peeps. Space peeps but they're really like creepy because they got like little faces underneath it's like they're like these cute little things that are being disguised as these creepy things oh so, I didn't notice that <laughs> yeah it's nice. like right see oh, there it yeah, is it's like... so creepy <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, it says you have the power to spawn. Each time you draw a card or retrieve a ship from the warp, use this power. Use this power. Add a horde token to one of your colonies. Treat horde tokens as ships under your control, but to discard them if sent to the warp. Remove from the game or captured by another player. If you lose this power, horde tokens remain until discarded. Your power cannot be stolen or copied through any means. So uh, there's a character that can copy. It's mimic. So I guess Mimic would be, like, null against this one. And it's mandatory. So you have to... You just yeah, get bigger and bigger ships. and bigger. You're just like this yeah. crazy horde of peeps, and they look like little, the little peeps, too. It's fun. Yeah. So I and really want to play wanna, that one. Yeah, you want to draw a lot of cards with that one, too. Like, mm -hmm. I, I think there's a rule, like, if you don't have any... any um, what are they called? Attack cards? Encounter you cards? Can just, yeah, and counter cards, then you can just, like, draw a new hand of seven cards or something. Mm -hmm. If you did that, then you'd get seven ships right there. 
Yeah, <laughs> it's just yeah. it'll be fun because it's it'll be like it'll be like madness. It'll just like ships constantly. Yeah, and I wonder exactly. how people will play against that, and yeah, if there's anything tardy, stopping yeah. the horde, or if it's just like you know. <laughs> Too powerful. Yeah. I, hope, I I just I hope that. That would be interesting. Being a little selfish, that I'm the one who gets it if I play, and not someone else, because <laughs> I yeah. really want to play it. <laughs> and then there's um. This one just looked creepy. I don't necessarily want to play it, but he just looks so creepy, this uh, xenophile. He's all like, Ugh. like, you know, all over the, I think that's called the... the I hate. think that's the hate, yeah. Yeah, the hate. But it's just, it's just, ugh. It's a creepy alien. <laughs> He's creepy. It says, you have the power of welcoming. As it, it doesn't look like welcoming. It looks like molestation or something. Yes. But anyways, um, use this power to add or subtract three from your side's total for each foreign colony in your home system. You do not lose this power because of having too few colonies. That's cool. Um, yeah, so you get the power to creepily invite yourself. Um, yeah. <laughs> there's a, a... There's... Um, one I would like to play is called The Claw, mm -hmm. and I forget exactly how it works, but the picture is like this giant portal, this giant claw coming out, like grabbing um, some giant creature, and just to emphasize that the claw is even bigger than everything else. And, um, I, I, you know, I, I'll have to find it, because it's just... It's just so weird looking, and it has this kind of weird grabby mechanic there where, like, you just come out and you just grab a planet or oh, something gosh. weird. I'll, I'll find it. I'll find it. I promise. Please, go on without me. Um, gosh, there's so many kinds. Is there, is there any... Actually, no, let me go back to a little bit more about the game first before I ask questions about, like, adding things to it, not that it already doesn't have a million characters and everything, but... I also, I also would love to play as a character that has, like, an alternate win condition. Mm. Like, like the masochist is the one where if you lose all your ships, you win. Yeah. Or, or like, um... Uh, TikTok, I think. Like, after just a certain amount of time, he mm -hmm. automatically wins, so you kind of have to win before the end of that time. Right. But the claw. Okay. Here, I don't know if you can see it. The claw. Yeah. Um, see, it says game setup. Choose one non negotiate card from your starting hand to be your claw and place it face down on the sheet. Then draw a card from the deck. You have the power of the claw. Your claw is not considered part of your hand. Other players may not look at it or draw it. At the start of any regroup phase, you may swap a card from your hand with your claw. Once per encounter, when another player plays another copy of the card you have chosen as your claw, use this power and reveal your claw. After the end of, of the current encounter, choose a planet in that player's home system and move it into your home system, sending any ships on it to the warp and making it a new home planet for yourself. <laughs> Jeez. Nice. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> then crazy. return your claw card to your hand and choose a card from your hand to become your new claw. Hmm. Each stolen planet <sighs> in your home system counts as a foreign colony towards your win, even if inhabited by other players. If, if you gain a colony on a stolen planet in your home system, that colony counts as a home colony. So, yeah, you basically just, like, Grab planets, steal people's planets, and then you. Oh that just sounds like so much fun. That I just thought of fun. like the best okay. game ever. Uh, like, or or what would you? Th okay, if you could take like say you have eight people and just pick the most ridiculous races and just stick them all in one game and see what happens. Like yeah. crazy, like well, with then. the horde and with the claw and with like the mirror the and with. The fungus. With the fungus and the horde together, there'd be yes. tons of horde tokens. Oh wait, I think I think maybe if the fungus eats the horde tokens, I think they go to the war, possibly. Uh, I'm not yeah. sure. But just like Let's the most they mayhem game ever. Like just pick the races that would be so insane with each other. Yeah. And just yeah. like watch it like 
just go crazy. All the and overpowered I've, races. I've thought about doing that in the past, but I've also felt like the longevity of the game is kind of key, um, or, or or not choosing specifically the races is kind of part of the longevity of the game. You know, like if yeah. if we all just chose whatever race we wanted to play, or made you know whatever. If we set it up too preemptively, I feel like we would end up just playing the scenarios that we want. Although I guess it wouldn't hurt to at least once. Just once. Like, yeah, go play go play the well, alien race you want to play. Then, mm -hmm. then maybe you'll never be able to compare a normal game again. You'll just be like, that one game where we all yeah, chose yeah, the exactly. races was amazing. Exactly. It could have been amazing, be or maybe it would be so horrible that we would never want to play again. Yeah. It's like, oh, the madness, it was like the world. <laughs> I, have heard, I have heard about alternate ways of playing the game, um, which mix it, mixes it up. I mean, one, one alter, alternate version, which I think is a really neat one, is that everyone starts the game with their alien race card hidden, so hmm. no one knows what race you have, and you cannot use that race's power unless you reveal it. So mm -hmm. that's kind of the downside to keeping it secret. However, keeping it secret might be beneficial to you if you wait for that that moment, you know? Mm -hmm. Especially if you're like the masochist, right? The guy who yeah, yeah. wins when all of his ships are destroyed. Well, you might keep your ability secret until almost all your ships are destroyed, you know, or something. Um, the other the other thing that I thought was kind of an interesting alternative, which could get really really crazy, and they only suggest this for seasoned players, is to actually play with um, two alien race cards per player oh, wow. instead of just one, and the the abilities yeah. combine basically. Oh, man! Oh my god! Oh, oh, imagine the so horde crazy. and the fungus together. Yes! Have tons of <laughs> ships and then just eat all of their ships. Yeah. <laughs> you just have, have everybody's ships to yourself. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that would be unbeatable. That would be so crazy. Uh, I can't, oh hey, god. Eat tokens, eat your regular tokens and now have a <laughs> ship. That'd be nuts. Yeah. Uh, that would be fun. That, that sounds interesting. I wouldn't mind trying that the next time we play. The two races or the hidden? Yeah. The, well, either way. I think the two races would be more interesting. Yeah. The hidden sounds like it, it makes it hard hard to, um, to gauge which race is overpowered, obviously. And like you were saying, the masochists, like, we'll just win on the spot. So... Mm -hmm. Well, it sounds it a little, yeah. Yeah, and how could you hide balanced. some of your abilities, though? Like, if you're the mirror, how are you going to well, immediately you, you just you really use hide it. it? Well, no, um, that's, that's the thing. The rule is you don't have an ability until you reveal your, your race card. Uh, so everyone basically has no ability until they reveal their race. Is that on, did you say that's by their choice when they feel like revealing it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. When they want to use their ability, they'll reveal uh, their card. But what if it's a mandatory? Then you'd immediately have to. No, no, you, no. you don't reveal it, then you don't have it. Yeah, so. it just doesn't oh. exist until you reveal okay, it. Okay, so then yeah. mandatory is kind of thrown out of the window until it's revealed. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Uh, and, and there's some other alternates, too. Let me see. Ah, oh, it's so warm in here. Hold on. And I now have to open my door. Um, let's see what other alternates they... <laughs> Variants. Uh, four planets. Is that a train sound? That's my fault. There's there's a train nearby. Oh, I thought oh. you said that's my phone. And I'm like, what? No, 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 my phone. Uh, just in my area. Does it does it make everything rumble? No, no, I'm I'm far enough away where that doesn't uh, happen. Okay. Thankfully. <laughs> um, whenever we go to the vet the vet's office, there's a train right there, and so the whole office shakes when Eesh. the train goes by. It's, just, do, 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 do. it's, it's the weirdest thing. <laughs> Sounds like it could freak out and the like, animals there, too. You know, I think probably the ones that that are, like, boarded or whatever, I don't know. I just, I don't hear them, like, 
they're like, oh, maybe they, they probably do get freaked out, but they don't really seem to notice that much. It's kind of mm. weird. I don't know. Yeah, the maybe the variants the, you know, technology. the variants that are included in the rule book are four planets, so everyone just has four planets instead of five. It's I guess meant for a faster game. Oh, okay. Uh. Hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, oh, and you only need four foreign colonies, so it's just for faster games. Oh, okay. uh, then Hidden Powers, obviously. Another one called... So another, that is one. one is, what? That is one, then. That, though, I thought that was one you made up, but they're really, that no, is no, a variant, no, no. the Hidden no, Powers. I, I didn't make up any of these. Oh, uh, okay. A, another one's called Rotating Powers, which it, I don't I don't think it sounds... It sounds more like work than anything else, but it's basically... Uh, the offense draws a new alien sheet at the start of his or her turn. Uh, the oh. offense may choose to keep either the old or the new alien sheet, which just sounds like work to me. Although, yeah. that would be a kind of interesting way to get to be able to play all the characters, all the aliens. That's yeah, true. you really wanted to jump around. Yeah. Uh, let's see, freewheeling flares. Uh, players may use as many flares as they wish during each encounter, although each flare, flare may only be used once per encounter. Um, yeah, oh, well, this is actually a rule we kind of already do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, what do you think about the flares? The flares. Um, I love they them. Do they're do they're fun. Right. Yeah. My, my favorite is the... Um, what is it? The filch flare? Which... Oh, yeah. If, if you if you have the flare, and you're the filch, or no, I, I think it's if 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 you're anyone but the filch, uh, and you have the flare, you can basically cheat. You can you can like just draw a card, or discard a card, or mm. take some ships back, or move some ships. Like you can basically just cheat, um, and and. Oh. And if unless someone catches you, you can do it as much as you want, which is yeah. <laughs> it's kind I of like, a lot of fun. I like how like sometimes you'll use those cards as like bargaining tools to get people to side with you. Yeah, like you're kind mm -hmm. of like I don't know if you're really supposed to do this, but we we have where you're kind of like hinting at the fact that you have something that somebody would want, yeah. and you know. I'll trade it with you if you know if you have that kind of ability, or I'll put it, I'll use it, yeah, you know, or whatever. But and, and that was actually one of the things I had been thinking about because I, I thought that like I, I would I would really like more um, player interaction in terms of like trading and stuff. Like I'd love to be able to just trade cards without uh, or um, without just having to negotiate or like offer ships and things like that. Like, I'll give you two ships and, you know, you just, you know, they use two ships or something like that. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, within reason, there's certain limitations in the game that you couldn't, uh, you know, I'm not suggesting it breaks certain rules, but I think it'd be interesting to have that leverage. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You know, I and I just, I wonder if how that would change the game. Because there's really no rules I can think of that state that you can't do certain things. Um, you know, and there might, it might be necessary for certain rules to exist so that people can't hold it over your head. Like, um, like you're not, I don't think you're, I don't think there's a rule that states you're not allowed to show someone your hand, um, which would lead me to believe that if someone asks you to show them your hand, you don't have to do it. But if you don't do it, that means you are hiding possibly something. hiding something, you know? And so well, if there was a rule in place. Hide your hand. Yeah, if there was a rule in place that stated you can't show each other your hands, you just go, well, I can't because that's the rule, right. you know? So, mm -hmm. I don't know. It's curious. Huh. Yeah. Uh, Robert, did you have any particular questions you wanted to ask? Um... Are we kind of like oh, well, actually, going over a lot of the things? Yeah, because um, it's something I've thought about. What do you guys think about the components and how the game's laid out? Like, you know, mm -hmm. the ships and the planets and the warp and the cards and all that stuff. What are your guys' thoughts? Because I have a few thoughts on that. 
I like um, how it's not like a traditional board. I like mm -hmm. that you have these separate planet pieces and these little ships and and I just I just like that. I feel like yeah, like what Robert's showing. Um, I just think it's interesting. It's it's the first time I had seen a game that was like that. Um, yeah, I mean, I really like the way it looks. Um, I mean, I just I think it's yeah. a fun way to play it. No, and I I agree a hundred percent with the fact that it's not like a traditional board, and that everyone. Uh, you know, instead of having like one board that's got five planets on it, you actually have five separate planets, mm -hmm. and that your kind of makes you here. feel like it's yours. Yeah, you know, it's really you have your own territory. It's really like your mm -hmm. territory, and you can kind of set them up in any formation you want. That you know, that's just I mean, it's not necessary, but it's kind of fun to be able to do that. Um, yeah. I like the little stacking on the ships. I think that's really fun. It kind of makes it. Um, it really is a great way to show the kind of um, defense you have on your planet. Yeah, um, yeah. Keep talking. I want to show you some of the the oh. old versions of it. Yeah, I've seen a, quite a few of them. I couldn't figure out which one was the oldest and the newest, and which one's the one that we have. Do we have the latest one? We have the latest version. Okay, I figured we did. Um. Um, let's see the original. It's always been separate, though, right? It's never uh, been on a completely like well, one piece board. Not necessarily. Like, no. well, there's been some variants. Yeah. Um, and actually, the one where is it? Here, I'll show this. Uh, share my screen. This thing. Here, can you guys see my mouse? Yeah. Yeah. So, huh. I don't know if you can see it here, but uh, in this, it's actually got like the ships, the stackable ships are like these little rocket-shaped things instead of UFOs. Um, your alien race card has like a stand, which is kind of cool. I, I, part of me kind of wishes I still had a stand. Um, uh. But the actual planets were not separate. They were like these little pallets that could be connected to the warp. Uh, you could separate them, but you could also connect it to the warp. Um, and it was kind of a neat idea, but it's almost more fancy than it needs to be. I, I like the way it is now with the modular, and I think the ships fit a little better. I feel like it's a lot cleaner now. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's, it feels kind of jumbled in there. It's all, it's real, like, in, compact and. I don't know. I, I don't. I th I really do like the the way it is now. Ugh. I don't know if that's a homemade version of the game or if that's an old old version. But that's <laughs> ugly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it looks pretty bad. That yeah. looks like something from like the seventies or the eighties. Yeah. Here's old alien race cards. Very. Yeah, like uh, we lost. Oh yeah. Let me, let me click on your thing. Very old. Let's see. What else? Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I for the most part, I like all the components. Um, the only thing I... Uh, I love the artwork, too, for the aliens. I think it's really fun. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it is definitely fun. I would say my only complaint is the way the score track works, because the warp... Um, here, I'll pull it out. The warp is this this disc, and this is where you put all the ships when they're destroyed, and you've got these numbers here that indicate you know how many foreign colonies you have, but the way you keep track is you have these little discs that kind of hang off the edge here, and they stack up, and those get knocked around so much that it's it's kind of ridiculous. Mm -hmm. um, I, I wish it was maybe this, but maybe a little bigger, and it was just like, you know, like maybe little pieces that you just set on here, you know, um, different colored pieces, little wooden pieces or, mm -hmm. or, you know, little plastic chips or something, or, or yeah. even just like 
I don't know, space. It could you know? be a an extra ship, like of your color. I mean, you know it's yeah. you know who's who. Well, and actually I was even thinking what might be really interesting um, is to play a variation of the game where you don't have a score track and that you just have a warp and that um, you know, you can only win when you have uh, five foreign colonies, um, but people have to keep track of that. If they're not paying attention, they could actually lose because they don't realize the person who is about to get their fifth colony, you know? And that might be... I could sneak up on you. It would be kind of interesting. Yeah, and I think that would be neat. That, that would be an interesting aspect of the game because it would actually, you know, it would require a little more attention. Um, I mean, the book the book already encourages you to tell people when someone's about to win. And so if that was a little bit more necessary to actually tell people and keep track of things, someone could win a battle and be like, all right, I won. What? Oh, I didn't know. Ah! You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to play that variation. That would be fun. Yeah, and it wouldn't be too complicated to, you know, as long as you're counting, like, you see... The person's ships on the other colonies. It's not. Yeah. You know, on the other hand, it. you could have someone who gets five foreign colonies and doesn't realize it, and the game keeps progressing. You know, which mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily ruin the game. It's just, you know, it's kind of like, well, if you're not paying attention, then someone else might change that fact, or someone else might also get five and then call it, and then they, you know, you add them up and you realize, oh, I won too. Maybe they get penalized if they don't notice themselves. Kind of like an Uno when you don't say Uno. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's like, it I won, cool. or whatever, you know, or something like bingo. that. Where if you don't, yeah, bingo. Yeah, yeah, bingo. If you don't announce it, you kind of, you know, maybe you lose a couple. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, something like that. That'd be kind of mean, but... Mm. But, yeah, I really like the components for the most part. Attention. I uh, don't think I would change them much, honestly. Yeah, they're pretty solid. Yeah, I think I, I agree. Just the uh, whole the victory point system of showing the colonies that's that's a little iffy, but the um, rest of the stuff I love, mm -hmm. like how it's set up. Oh, actually, one other thing I think would be kind of nice is when you play attack cards, um, because people are usually facing each other. When you flip an attack card over, there's a split second sometimes where you don't quite know if it's like a six or a nine, right? Because of the 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 the, the like the angle you're looking at it at, the perspective. And I think mm -hmm. it'd be maybe nice if they actually had like the numbers in the corners, like they do traditional playing cards, so that when mm -hmm. you flip it over, it's just an easier glance. I mean, it's it's a minor thing, but it's something I notice every time a card's flipped over. Usually, it has to be rotated or something so everyone can see it. But that's so minor. I mean, it's not it's not game breaking, but it's you know, it's a thought. Mm -hmm. Well, it's uh, currently eight o two. Um, I guess uh, that's our hour. But um, is there any any quick wrap up comments that anyone would like to make? Uh, Cosmic Encounter is an excellent game. You should try it until you know that you like it <laughs> mm -hmm. because it's, it's it's a really fun game and it, one of the reasons I absolutely love it is the fact that it's so um, it's an extremely social game and that can be great if you have the right people it, it can also be bad if you have the wrong people I, I haven't, I mean there's only a few people I play the game with that make it a little bit bitter sometimes but for the most part I always have a great time because the social interaction is such a blast and allying with your friends and stabbing your friends in the back can be some of the best times <laughs> ever. Especially, especially when I stab you in the back, Robert. That's always fun. Yes. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> sorry. I will never hurt you like, like that again. <laughs> That's right. That's how it all started, Cosmic Encounter. That's how the <laughs> rivalry began. Yes. You, 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 you lied to me. And that's just why once. I, yeah. Just once. I'll never forget. <laughs> never, just once, ever. never again. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so um, anyone uh, hasn't played Cosmic Encounter or doesn't have it and has played it with your friends, um, you can get it on Amazon.com. Uh, 
uh, you can look it up on Game Board Geek. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a million, I'm sure there's a million other places to purchase it. Um, and if you are interested in what we're doing, you can go to unchartedinteractive.com. Obviously, we're on G+, and Facebook, and Twitter, so follow us on those. And uh, we will see you next time. Let's see what date. Um, uh, June 30th. Yeah, that's the last uh, Sunday of the month. This month, we only did it earlier because next uh, week, uh, we are going to Fanime. So uh, I'm going to probably post some cosplay pictures up on G+, to show my costumes off for fun. So look for those uh, next week. And I uh, hope everyone has a good Memorial Day. And uh, thank you guys for joining me. And uh, you will see us uh, next month. I don't know what the game is yet. I don't know. I'll figure that out. I'll figure that out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Woo! Uh, what's another one? I don't know. That didn't work. Oh, oh, I just hit two. Whatever. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Yeah.